Hi all and thanks so much for joining me. Today I'm going to be taking you through my process for renovating these old bench ends into something a little bit more usable for my mum and dad. So as you can see there's lots of old paint on here and I tried using some paint stripper with little success. So I've taken this over to my local Vapor Blaster Iva who's done a cracking job. Now Vapor Blasting, um, also kind of similar to Shot Blasting, uh, will basically fire media at high pressure onto the object and strip off all the paint. Now Ivor here, this is his brother and uh, his late father as well, all know lots about motorcycle components and have been racing them and renovating them. Uh, it's great vapor blasting for these delicate items and the shot blasting is great for these bench ends too, they're a bit more hardcore. Um, after I dropped them off I went straight to my local hardware store, so I picked up some primer here. And I've also picked up some exterior finish as well for the timber slats that I'll use later down the line before heading over to Bethy, who's got lots of treats in store. So we decided to take our snacks and bits uh, down to the spot where my mum and dad are actually going to be moving to. So this is the Cane Hill Locks in Devizes, which is um, pretty synonymous with the town. Um, it's a really lovely spot to be and um, I hope this bench is going to um, help them take stock of the view. So a few days later I got the um, bench ends back from Ivo who's done a fantastic job and these look completely different to what I had left with him. So as you can see all that paint is off, um, it's a really clean job so now all I can do is just whack on the primer and the paint. Um, this primer itself is going to help the paint stick to the cast iron bench ends. Um, it's also going to fill in any small indentations that it's had through age. I think Hans has got something stuck in his face here. But ideally you want to be doing this on a nice warm day. Um, it's really going to help um, prevent this orange peel effect that you can sometimes get. But if it is cold outside, feel free to leave them in a warm place and then bring them out when you need to use them. And I'm just doing a nice even left to right motion, probably about 15-20 centimeters away from the actual bench ends. And we want a really nice even coverage, so you might need to do two or three coats of primer as I say. And then we can move on to your paint colour of choice. Now I'm going to be using a cotton cream paint uh, for this job. I think it'll look really nice with the oak timber. And I'm probably going to need to do about four or five coats to get that really nice even coverage. But again, just working left to right, making sure I get in all those nooks and crannies and get a really nice even finish. Now as you'll see in just a sec, um, I used a matte paint. So there's no sheen to this, um, but you could use a gloss paint um, if you'd like it to have that shiny look, or a satin is somewhere in between the two. And then you could also apply some varnish a little later on to help protect it for more years to come. So I decided to use this oak board that I've had in the garage for a little while that's been uh, calling out for some use. Oak's great because it's pretty impervious to the uh, terrible weather conditions we have here in this country. Uh, my mum has specifically asked that it's a hundred centimetres long. Um, I guess she has a specific place in mind that she wants this to go and a hundred centimetres is, is just about right to get two people in but you can obviously make this to any size of your choice, so I'm just going to mark mine out to 100 centimetres. thing I sometimes like to do is overcompensate for the length a little bit so I've actually cut this to 101 centimeters and the idea here is to now clamp those pieces together I'm going to take them over to the chop saw and I'm going to cut that extra little half a centimeter off on each end and it's going to give me a really nice even finish 
I'm going to know that every board is the exact same length, which is going to really help later down the line when we go to bolt these all together. Right now that's done, I need to cut the width. So I'm going to cut all these slats down to five centimeters wide. And once that's done, I want to get the sander out, starting with quite a coarse uh, piece of sandpaper. This is actually 60 grit and it's going to take off all the really old weathering I'm going across all sides here some people like to use um, a grit that's somewhere in between coarse and fine um, but I don't really find that this is necessary so I'm just going straight to a 240 grit sandpaper and this is going to make it feel nice and smooth to the touch and I'm also going to work this on a 45 degree angle on those really hard edges as well just to bevel them slightly and once that's all done, I can then put the first slat in place. And this is just going to help anchor this all together for the remaining pieces. So there are little holes underneath the bench ends here, and I'm just marking out those holes on the underside of the timber. So I'm going to drill the holes on both ends. And these are nuts and bolts I'm going to be using. As you can see, it's got a countersunk head. And I've got a washer on one end just to help it stay in place for as long as possible. And we want to get the countersink drill bit on the go. So as you'll see here, it'll sit nice and flush with the piece of timber. So I'm just fixing this into place um, so I can then go ahead and put all the other slats into each area that it needs to be. And I number each slat as I go along as well because all the holes on the underside of the bench ends were very uneven. So this is going to help me fix them all into place later down the line. And again, we're going to put all of our holes and countersink all of those holes in each piece. Now I've gone through all of the slats and I want to just add one last little thing, just something to make it a little bit more special and handmade. So I've got this picture of a canal boat to represent where they live. I'm going to take a piece of carbon paper, place the outline on the top, and then just running a pen um, along the design, the carbon paper is actually going to leave an impression on the piece of timber for me to follow later with my Dremel tool. So I'm using a ruler to get a really nice clean finish and then going three hand on the curved edges. Now I saw you with another. And once it's done you can remove it and hopefully you've got a nice impression left and you can just tidy up any edges that haven't quite been complete. That I've got so I'm adding a few extra slats to help support the following attachment which is sort of like a router bit and um, here we've got quite a fine Dremel bit in uh, I'm just going to be creating a singular line down each of the outlines and then I'm just going to put this router attachment on top um, which I'll leave a link for in the, in the description below and you can just set your depth just like you would with any other router so I'm just clamping a workpiece in place just to use it as a guide to get a really nice clean finish on those straight edges. So I've got this on quite a high speed and I'm just going to plunge it in and hopefully get a nice even finish. Thanks to that extra work piece just help guiding me through and I followed this all the way around the border. As you can see here I'm just resting the router bit sort of towards one side and then I'm plunging the Dremel tool in and then working across it as I need to.
Here I'm actually going freehand. This is one of the curved edges. And uh, I just say really take your time on this um, sort of area. It's hard to rectify any of these mistakes at this point. And there it is, there's the finished piece. And you can add any design you want to make it personable to you. And finally then, uh, as the timber is gonna be exposed to the elements, we want to treat it. So I'm gonna use some Ron Seal furniture oil. So we're gonna give the can a good shake, apply a healthy dollop onto an old rag. And then we're gonna just work it across the grain and really try and work it into the timber. So you should see a change in the grain. So it's the lighter compared to the darker area. So as well as putting some treatment into the timber, it's actually gonna pull the grain out and make it look nicer. And once you've done adding all the oil, you can then take another clean shop rag and uh, go across it and just take away all the excess that's on there. This is gonna prevent it from getting all sticky. And then of course we can then let this dry out. So you can leave it for about two to four hours before giving it another coat. And it's recommended to give about two or three coats. So we've got a nice stack of wood here now. All we've got to do is uh, join it back up to our bench ends and we are done. So happy days. I'm really pleased with how this turned out. Um, I like how the um, oak sort of bounced off the cotton cream colour. It's a good size and uh, Louis approves so that's the main thing. So thanks very much for watching this video. Uh, we're going to be doing some more DIY projects and a couple more camper fan videos coming very soon. So hopefully we'll catch up again with you shortly.